Aromatic Adventure <laughs> Can you hear that? The dark, twisted, ominous sounds of ghost ghouls, goblins, creepy crawlies that squirm underneath your bed. That is the sound of the Halloween season getting closer and closer to us, my friends. It's right around the corner now. It's actually not. We still have a long stretch before we get to Halloween, but I think it comes to no surprise, if you know me, that I, I, I just, I'm a big fan of Halloween. And today I am going to be partaking in a collaboration of grand Halloween proportions. Welcome everybody to The Candle Enthusiast. I am your host, Shane Carlson, and today we're doing another mystery box, but not just any ordinary mystery box. It's going to be a haunted Halloween good old-fashioned trick-or-treat mystery box with my good friend Doug from Spooky Villages. If you are not acquainted with Doug, if you haven't visited Spooky Villages, the YouTube channel, I'm going to link up his channel in the description below, and you got to get over there, especially if you are as passionate and as enthusiastic as I am about Halloween, because this guy, if there's anybody, if there's anybody who knows how to celebrate Halloween, it's Doug from Spooky Villages, and he's got you covered for the entire spooky season. I sent him a mystery box loaded with candles and goodies of Halloween nostalgia. He's going to produce a video. So as soon as you're done watching this video, swing over to Doug's channel, check out what I sent him. But for now, right now, I am going to open up the box he sent me. Uh, if I can find out where it is, right here. This box was not sent directly from Doug's residence. He actually purchased uh, a bunch of products from darkcandles.com. This is a candle company that he has uh, raved about, he's talked about. Doug also wrote us a little letter. Let's see what it has to say. Shane, sincerest thanks for both your friendship and the effort you put into The Candle Enthusiast. Your YouTube channel is one of the main reasons that I even have a channel. I'm excited to finally get to do a Halloween collaboration! Exclamation point. I have sent you two sampler packs from Dark Candles, a company that specializes in spooky wax. Many folks have asked me to talk about them, but I wanted you to have the honor. I have burned the Halloween set before, and there are several that I really enjoy. I have never tried the Vampire Collection, but I'm looking forward to seeing what you think. Hope you enjoy. Hopefully next year we can do a Halloween video in person. I, I hope, hopefully we can do that. I think that would be a fantastic idea. Maybe a haunted hayride or something like that. All right. All right, look at this. Tons of goodies. Look at that, right there on top. What is that? Is that a bunny? Is that a green phosphorescent bunny? I don't know what that is. Oh, it's not a bunny, it was upside down. It's actually a teddy bear. See, I was holding it like this, it looked like a bunny, but it's actually a teddy bear called Margarita. Excellent little bonus margarita treat. But let's dig deeper into this box. We have two nice sized boxes here. Let's start with this one here, the Halloween pack. Now this is the one that Doug said that he has experienced. He hasn't experienced the vampire pack. Alrighty. Ooh. And then inside we have this pumpkin orange tissue paper. Whew. Very intriguing Halloween spooky aromas. We have four votives and included is a purple votive holder. Uh, we have haunted house, bonfire, dark carnival, and falling leaves. I have them all lined up. Uh, one thing I do want to make perfectly clear is that I have not read the fragrance notes. I don't even know if there's fragrance notes on the websites for these candles. But I'm going to do my best to uh, share 
with you my initial impressions. Here we go. First candle on the list, haunted house. I love me a good old haunted house. And that is not, that is not a low intensity candle. A very familiar smell here. Uh, one of my all time favorite ingredients for Halloween inside of this candle, and that's going to be myrrh. Now myrrh we associate with incense, especially in the church setting, right? But the thing is, in the church setting, myrrh is usually, it's burned, right? We're, we're used to myrrh in its smoke form. But myrrh on its own, the resin smells actually very sweet. It smells very thick and rich. It smells a little bit dusty. It smells a little bit earthy. But there's certainly other things happening here. We have a patchouli adding to that earthiness, which is going to add to the woodiness of uh, this haunted house, as if we can smell those ancient floorboards, the, 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 the decaying uh, staircase that's falling to pieces, but also some clove in here, uh, some smoky clove. Uh, the clove complements the, the natural smokiness of the myrrh. So this does have an overall incense-like aroma. This smells old. This smells decrepit. But with all of that said, it's sweetened up just enough to make it not so intimidating for the average folks. Uh, fantastic way to begin this evaluation. Dark Candles Halloween Collection Haunted House. Definitely that old spooky house in the corner of the town that nobody nobody dares enter i would go in i would go in if i was a kid because if i went in as an adult you know there's always that potential of trespassing and getting arrested you don't want that to happen next candle on the list is going to be bonfire so we talked about there's a little bit of smokiness in the last candle maybe this is a much bigger smoky experience and it's really not. Uh, first thing that comes to mind is like a, it's very, very soapy, very clean and zesty. Um, the, the color is tipping me off a little bit, but a little bit of this orange zest, orange candy, and it's tripping me up a little bit, uh, to be honest with you, because this is bonfire is not the first thing that would cross my mind when I smell this, but I do smell like fresh split firewood, but a very specific kind of wood, pine. And that's going to, uh, 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 I think, stem off of the citrus. Like this isn't like dried out firewood. This is like a fresh split pine tree, uh, ready to be roasted in the fire. It's, it's a very soapy aroma. And I'm not talking about like Irish Spring soap, Old Spice cologne. This is, you know, this reminds me of like my grandmother's uh, soap. You know, you know the display soap, the soap that wasn't meant to be used. It was just for display purposes, or at least for special fancy guests. Did your grandmother have soaps like that? I don't know. M mine did. Uh, but you know what I mean? That old fashioned kind of barber shop, uh, musky soap, a little bit powdery. I know somewhere in the description notes of this fragrance, it's gonna say musk in some form. Could be a floral musk or a white musk, uh, but definitely a heavy resinous smell on this one as well. Bonfire might be a little bit deceiving of a name, but you know what? That's all that's okay in my book Once again, I'll read all the fragrance notes if there are any as soon as I get through all of these But we need to keep moving candle number three dark Carnival when I was younger. Uh, I used to go to a lot of outdoor haunted attractions hay rides haunted houses uh, the experience uh, Hopefully in this candle will kind of remind me of that All right, so I'm picking, I mean, uh, I'll be honest, p picking up a lot of wax, waxy smell here. It's a rich smell, almost like uh, a latex, 
like smell. Interesting. This reminds me, um, and I'm gonna be, this is gonna be crazy if I'm way off, but this reminds me of going into the Halloween stores, you know, to pick out your Halloween costume for the season. When I was a kid, you know, you're walking down those aisles and you have all the little uh, packets, the kits to do your own makeup. You have all the costumes, but then there was always that wall that had masks, all of those latex masks, the ones that you knew that you would never be able to afford, but they were so, uh, so cool to look at from a distance. Uh, but if you ever had a chance to get that mask, you know, I had one or two in my, in my childhood. Uh, my parents laid down the money to get me a Michael Myers mask. And uh, I remember I had this really cool zombie mask. Now, like, again, I'm gonna be really, uh, embarrassed if I'm way off. What I think I need to do is I'm gonna take this plate and I'm gonna hit this votive with a little bit of heat. I have something here. Kids, don't do this at home. Uh, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna set this thing on fire, but I'm just gonna add a little bit of heat to this hopefully to uh, volatize some of the oils of this candle. I should probably put a glove on too. Again, I'm not gonna come in contact. I'm just gonna add a little heat to this votive. I think that should do it. I definitely hit this with a lot of heat and I'm picking up the same thing. So I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to stick with my my gut reaction. I'm going to say that this smells like not, not necessarily like a carnival like I was expecting, but more of that costume shop. Maybe this is like the backstage area of a carnival where you would walk in and everyone's putting on their makeup and wigs and costumes. Maybe this is like backstage carnival. That's my initial reaction. We'll read those fragrance notes when we're done, but let's continue. Candle number four, falling leaves. Because what would Halloween be? What would autumn be without the sweet smell of the freshly fallen foliage on the forest floor? Let's see what this candle has in store. Oh yeah. Okay, so to me, this is a much more literal approach here. This smells like leaves. This smells like foliage. This smells like that pile of leaves that Linus jumps into with his lollipop. Never jump into a pile of wet leaves with a wet sucker, as he would say. Uh, the question is, what makes up this smell? What makes up the smell of dead leaves? We have, in this case, uh, without question, in my opinion, oak moss. This smells like uh, a mossy, you know, uh, fallen down tree in the middle of the woods. That very green smell of moss. And that's, that's what oak moss will give to your candle. Uh, but also a very dried out hay bale smell. Whether we're walking through that, 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 that cornfield with the scarecrow, uh, perched up on his cross, or if we're on that hayride being pulled through the dark trail at that haunted attraction, this smells like a hay bale, this smells like dried out uh, vegetation. I, I don't think, I, I wouldn't go as far to say as, uh, patchouli in this candle, but vetiver. Vetiver is uh, a tropical grass, but in its fragrance oil form it smells like roots it smells like root systems can't say this enough like just imagine ripping out like a radishes or beets out of the ground right and it doesn't smell like beets it doesn't smell like radishes but it smells like the root systems that are attached to those turnips beet a beet is a turnip right i think it is black tea black tea if you smell black tea uh, you can smell Earl Grey. Earl Grey is black tea with bergamot oil, but black tea is always a great component to use to, to create that illusion of dead vegetation. This is that haunted hayride. This is that corn maze. This is that lonely, very scary stroll through the countryside uh, in the middle of the night. 
it speaks volumes when it comes to Halloween. So now that we've made our way through these four fragrances of the Halloween pack, let's read the fragrance notes of these. So here is the description of the haunted house. A spellbinding blend of haunting forest woods, spooky spices, and the witch's little dark secret. What's her secret? A dark central fragrance with a musky quality. I'm satisfied with that description. There are no fragrance notes, which I have to admit, I admire, I like that. So I think this description illustrates certainly what I did experience with that candle. They mentioned the forest. I mentioned being inside of the house itself. Either way, I think it works. Let's look at bonfire. A fiery autumn blend with top notes of incense and orange, orange, middle notes of eucalyptus and vetiver. So I didn't say vetiver on this one, but vetiver is included. Uh, and bottom notes of amber and nutmeg, complex and invigorating. Amber, amber is what I should have said, the soapiness, right? Remember that old fashion soap. Let's look up Dark Carnival. Now this one really has me intrigued and a little bit frightened, to be honest with you, to see if I was way off. Dark Carnival. This scent will evoke images of dark laughter, midway games, freaky sideshows, and seedy characters. A blend of warm caramel popcorn nutty candy apples, and fluffy cotton candy. This scent is not for eating, although you just might be tempted. Let me give this one more sniff. I think this might be a scenario um, where this candle truly needs to be burned because when I was talking about the latex and when I was talking about the costume shop, um, really, I think maybe what I'm just smelling is the wax of this candle. I'm not getting cotton candy. I'm not getting nutty candy apples. And uh, nor am I getting uh, the, the popcorn, uh, the caramel popcorn. Uh, so that is interesting. I'll be looking forward to burning this one to see if that comes through. But let's check out the fall leaves. Crisp forest leaves drifting down on a cool winter night. A scent that complements the season of autumn. Woody, earthy, and crisp. But if there's one that speaks to me the most, it's definitely the falling leaves out of this Halloween pack. We still have an entire other collection uh, called the Vampire Pack. Let's Break this open and see what we have. All right, the vampire pack. Let's open this up and see what we have inside. Ooh, this time we have red tissue paper and we have our red votive holder. I'm smelling it. I'm smelling Halloween. I'm smelling it. I'm smelling vampires is what I'm smelling. What does Dracula smell like? Dark, dark berry, dark berry and coffee. Some musky rose. We have some rosiness here. Yeah, this smells like a bouquet of, of roses that are many days old and are drying out. The petals are falling, they're wilting, but it's sweetened up by that berry fruit. Uh, I'm gonna stick with the black currant, but we could say other black fruits like blackberry, huckleberry, boysenberry. <sighs> a little bit of a, like a medicinal cherry note too. Uh, Luden's cough drops. And, and like all of these candles, uh, it's, these all seem to have big resinous smells, which is not typical for large commercial candle companies. All of these have that, that resinous incense-like smell that we would experience walking into uh, that, uh, you know, Tannen's Magic Shop in, in New York City, or Abracadabra's in New York City, or the Fortune Teller's Parlor. Uh, incense has been burning uh, somewhere uh, in the castle when I smell this Dracula fragrance. Uh, juicy red fruits with dead roses 
and uh, incense smoke uh, lingering in the background. Let's move on to Nosferatu. Uh, we're probably all familiar with the 1922 German film uh, Nosferatu, directed by F.W. Marnow, starring Max Schreck. Uh, one of the classic prime cinematic examples of German expressionism. If there's ever a movie that deserved a candle, it's got to be Nosferatu. What does it smell like? Wow. Okay, so easily, easily the most intense of any of the candles I smelled so far. This is patchouli in a very, very big way. Uh, patchouli and spice, patchouli, uh, mainly like, again, we're getting that smoky clove. I wouldn't be, I wasn't, I wouldn't hesitate for a second to say other exotic spices in here, uh, coriander and, uh, cardamom, perhaps, maybe even some star anise, actually definitely star anise in here, a monstrous patchouli candle. I like patchouli. I know a lot of folks that can't do it. They can't do it. A lot of people can't do Nosferatu either. Some people recoil at the presence of Nosferatu. But others are, are beckoned by his, his, his charisma. I don't know where I'm going with this, but if you're into patchouli in, in a, a very large way, uh, this is uh, definitely a, a hot ticket. Nosferatu, uh, much different than Dracula. And next on the list, Cain. Cain, Cain and Abel, are we familiar with the biblical story? Cain is gonna be the firstborn son of Adam and Eve. The story very famous for the two brothers, but Cain also has his place in the folklore, the mythology of vampires. I'll let you do your own little research there. Okay, so, patchouli and clove. I'm not kidding. Uh, patchouli, clove, musky like black leather. Think of black leather. Think of Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. She doesn't wear leather. She wears a lot of things, but she doesn't wear leather, at least not all the time. That very musky, treated leather aroma. Perhaps some myrrh in here as well. But what I do have to say, even though I am getting the spices, the clove, uh, really just the clove, like I did in the Nosferatu, and I'm getting the, the, the patchouli, the intensity is much lower here. And that's not a bad thing at all because Nosferatu was a beast. But for, for me, really, this is just a toned down version of Nosferatu. A lot of the same ingredients, uh, maybe lacking some of the spices of Nosferatu and perhaps uh, with the addition of myrrh, cane by a dark candle. Uh, long before Bram Stoker's Dracula, again, in the folklore, the mythology of vampires, this name Lilith, uh, this demon-like woman uh, who's uh, absolutely gorgeous. I'll let you do a little bit of research on that, but to me, this siren-esque, beautiful, gorgeous, but very dangerous vampire. Let's see what Lilith smells like. Ooh. Lilith smells very fruity. Lilith smells like red currant. R Lilith smells like cranberry. Tart red fruits, black cherry. Cherry pie filling. Um, not cooked down red fruits, but very, um, very concentrated red fruit. This smells like uh, um, uh, a now and later's candy, uh, like a, like a, if they, I don't know, I can't remember the flavors, but if they made like a wild cherry uh, now and later's candy, now remember now and later's, they're kind of like Starburst, but they're a little harder, they're like hard taffy, they get stuck to your teeth and they can pull out your fillings. So very candy-esque, very bright, raspberry, strawberry, red fruit forward all of the way. Also some floral notes. Uh, it's gonna be balanced out with, uh, for the sake of not saying rose again, I'll go with gardenia, gardenia petals. Gardenia can smell a lot like rose, a much more fresh 
form of rose and very mild, very mild. It's going to lay low in the background as a backdrop. You know, this red fruit is just portraying, you know, um, the way Lilith must perceive the smell of blood, right? That almost velvety, soft gardenia background. And once again, I have to throw it in there, a, a deep resinous smell, incense in some form. If you ever burn the incense or a candle called Dragon's Blood, Dragon's Blood is a, a proprietary blend from company to company of uh, plant resins. And uh, when I smell this, I feel like a lot of those ingredients that would go into a, a dragon's blood candle or an incense are in here. Something like this, Lilith, uh, could really bring an elegant, elegantly gothic Halloween experience uh, as far as home fragrance is concerned without anything uh, as aggressive as something like patchouli. Lilith by Dark Candles, a part of the Halloween collection. Now, let's go through the fragrance notes. Dracula, like a fine wine. Why did I not mention wine? Like a fine wine, he only gets better with age. Beautifully put. Add a touch of aged Merlot with some Turkish spices, sweetened with masculine musk. It's a sexy scent with a bite to it. But here's the thing, Dracula, he never drinks wine. Do you remember that quote? Nosferatu, my interest is really peaked here. I'm very curious to see how they're gonna describe the differences between Nosferatu and Cain. Nosferatu, deep, mysterious, and masculine, packed with Arabian spices, Turkish oils, and Indian resins. Wow, so the, the Dark Candles is, is really using a lot of uh, ingredients that are out of the norm of mainstream uh, candle companies, which I highly admire. This is a dark, spicy scent, reminiscent of the 1930s Nosferatu. 1930s, 1922 was uh, the release of Nosferatu. Little typo there on their part, but I'll forgive Dark Candles. I'll forgive them. Now, like I said, Cain to me was a much toned down version than Nosferatu. Dark Candles description. Traditional gothic scent comprised of natural patchouli and clove. And, that, and, that, and that's it. But I mean, that's exactly what I smelled. And last, but certainly not least, Lilith. Oh, they even have a trademark on the name of this candle. Very feminine and sexy. I'll go there. A blend of succulent raspberries and deep natural patchouli. Patchouli, all right, all right. Uh, I was, you know, I was saying uh, resinous. I don't see any floral action in here. I was definitely picking up some florals, but uh, I am satisfied with those fragrance notes. So look, I just quickly gave you my initial impressions of eight fragrances. I did this incredibly fast, but these candles deserve a lot of attention. If you are a hardcore Halloween candle fan, uh, I'm gonna say check out Dark Candles. This is a company that deserves more attention. I haven't been introduced, and the fact that it's taken this long for me to be introduced, um, I'm kind of ashamed. I, I feel like I should have uh, known about this company a little bit sooner. So check it out. Check out the website. Very easy to remember, darkcandles.com, but I'm gonna, certainly going to link them up and all of their social media links in the description below. I want to give a huge, warm shout out, spooky shout out to Doug from Spooky Villages for providing uh, and introducing me to all of these spooky haunted halloween fragrances they're all gonna go to great use this season but doug and i discussed you know we usually you know when we chit chat we we ask ourselves because we're both halloween fanatics we say what is it about halloween that truly 
makes us so nostalgic? Why Halloween? What is it about the holiday? And when he proposed this question to me, it really made me think, you know, uh, you know, because I, I grew up loving Halloween even more than I loved Christmas. And what I think it comes down to is when I was a kid, I, I wanted to live in a world of fantasy. I wanted to live in a world of make-believe. I watched all of these amazing movies that were a part of my father's VHS collection. And I wanted to be able to walk into those movies and escape and live in all of those worlds. And Halloween was the one night of the year that really did span the entire month of October where it was accepted and it was encouraged to be imaginative, to be, to, to, to live in that world of fantasy. I think that's why even as a full grown adult, uh, I still, I'm a little, a little child at heart when it comes to Halloween. I want to venture like Jonathan Harker into that Dracula's castle. I want to walk through those dank, cold corridors, not knowing what's around each corner, hiding in the shadows. I long for the days of trick-or-treating and costume shopping and going to haunted houses and those haunted hayrides. I worry in modern day that we're losing touch of what Halloween truly was uh, when I was younger. And I wonder if there will ever be that resurgence of what Halloween was when I was a child. What better way to live those old-fashioned nostalgic memories of Halloween than burning a candle, closing our eyes, and let those spooky fragrances whisk us away to the land of haunted fantasy. Uh, if you are a true Halloween fanatic like I am, I think you'll know what I'm talking about. Stuff like this uh, is not food, it's decoration. But enough about my Halloween nostalgia. I hope everyone has a wonderful Halloween season coming up. We still got plenty of time, but there can never be too much time for Halloween preparation. Decorate the front lawn, decorate the inside of the house, decorate the garage and make your own haunted house. Once again, I want to thank Doug uh, from Spooky Villages. Make sure you swing over, check out his video. Uh, I sent him some spooky fragrances myself. But for me, that's going to be it for tonight. I will be seeing you folks soon. But until then, be good and stay safe.